giant covalent networks are special kinds of substances, and this is because they are made up of millions of atoms, all bonded covalently to more and more atoms. These covalent bonds are extremely strong, and so giant covalent networks, of which you need to know three, all have massively high melting and boiling points. Firstly, we'll talk briefly about diamond. You will have all heard thrilling tales about how only diamond can cut through other diamond because only diamond is strong enough. Well, that's because diamond is a giant covalent network. In diamond, carbon atoms are covalently bonded to four more carbon atoms. And that's all there is to it. The structure looks roughly like this. Diamond has an extremely high melting and boiling point. This is simply because of these terribly powerful covalent bonds, which here are the black lines between the carbon atoms. In order to even slightly break these, it would take an unimaginable amount of energy. Diamond is very hard. This amazing hardness comes from the fact that this giant crystal structure has covalent bonding in three dimensions. Diamond does not conduct electricity. There is no possible way for diamond to conduct electricity because all of the valence electrons are firmly locked away in these covalent bonds. No free charge, no conducting electricity. Diamond is not soluble in water. This is because the carbon atoms have no charge and so there is no attraction to the positive or negative ends of the water molecules. Now that diamond is taken care of, we can move on to graphite. Graphite is a grey, dull substance that we can use to draw with. It is actually the lead in your pencil. Even though graphite is a giant covalent network, like diamond, it looks very different to diamond. In graphite, we see sheets, where carbon atoms are bonded to three other carbon atoms. But this is only a single flat sheet. In reality, a chunk of graphite is made up of millions of these sheets lying flat atop one another, like so. Now what are those red bonds that connect one layer with the one above and below it? Well they are actually our old friends, the weak intermolecular forces. Yes, they're back. So, so in graphite we have carbons bonded to other carbons with covalent bonds, and then layers held together by weak intermolecular forces. How interesting. Graphite has a very high melting and boiling point. Same old story here really. Lots of energy is needed to break apart the strong covalent bonds within the sheets. Graphite is slippery to the touch. This is also why graphite can be used to write or draw with. This is due to these weak intermolecular forces between the sheets. They mean that layers of graphite can easily slide over each other and onto your paper. Graphite does conduct electricity. In diamond, every carbon atom used all of its valence electrons in the covalent bonding. However, because in graphite, each carbon atom is only bonded to three other carbons, it has a single delocalized valence electron. These are free to move around the sheet, and that's how electricity gets conducted. Graphite is not soluble in water. This is due to the fact that the carbon atoms have no charge, and the polar water molecules will never be able to overcome those powerful covalent bonds. The final kind of giant covalent network you need to be clued up on for that dreadful chemistry exam is silicon dioxide, or SiO2. Silicon dioxide is arranged in a 3D lattice, like diamond, and it shares all of diamond's properties, though it isn't quite as hard, for basically the same reasons.